So we got some surprises popping up on the injury report for both the Baltimore Ravens and the Cincinnati Bengals ahead of this Thursday night football game, which is actually happening tomorrow. Let's get into it. Before we do, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on, and like y'all have been already, leave a like on the video. I appreciate y'all helping out so much. I appreciate y'all supporting the channel. Y'all been going absolutely insane, leaving likes on the video. So thank you so much for that. Now, with this injury news, Isaiah Likely. In the game uh, against the Broncos, he didn't play many snaps, and I hadn't even noticed because the Ravens just kept running up the score over and over and over and over and over, and I got no problem with that. But Isaiah Likely, he wasn't a big part of that game. Then he popped up on, I think, Monday on the injury report. They said that he had a hamstring injury, and I was like, what? Really? And I'm like, ah, it ain't going to be nothing. Hamstring injury, he's going to be straight. He's going to be out there practicing, getting ready for this Thursday night football game. Then no, he's not. And today, he was officially ruled out. So Isaiah likely will not be suiting up uh, against the Cincinnati Bengals on Thursday night football. And that sucks because Isaiah likely, he adds such a nice element to this Baltimore Ravens offense. Was he being featured like crazy recently? No, but him being available, just him being on the field, he was getting a pass every now and then. So just him being there, his presence alone, it just created a mismatch. It created problems for defenses because that's somebody that you genuinely, significantly really have to account for. So now the fact that the Baltimore Ravens will be without him, that is a big blow to their offense. Now, um, they have options with this, though, and this is why we really love the Baltimore Ravens offense this year because it's not like it's just a one-man show and if that person is out then they're done no they did just recently add Deontay Johnson so we look forward to him having just a bit of an increased role this week but they also have Charlie Cole and Charlie Cole is somebody that this year he's really been making his mark on his offense it comes in spurts comes and goes but he's been a lot more involved more than he's ever been throughout his entire career this year now something that I want to point out whenever I talk about some of the best coaches in the league and, and some of the best coaches that really make weapons out of so many different pl players on their offense I always bring out Andy Reid because as y'all y'all know about Andy Reid already the head coach of the Kansas City Chiefs he's, he's their offensive play caller and every single year every single week the Chiefs always making somebody new a weapon but also Kyle Shanahan he was another person that was just so excellent doing that with the San Francisco 49ers, just making weapons out of different guys that you wouldn't even expect. But this year I've been thinking about it, especially over the past couple of weeks, it's been on my mind. I've been like, hold up. I can mention Todd Munkin in that conversation right now. Because when you think about the Baltimore Ravens offense, you're like, hold up. Obviously, Lamar Jackson. Obviously, Derrick Henry. Then you got Mark Andrews, too. Zay Flowers. But Rashad Bateman, not recently, but... This year has been a better year for Rashad Bateman overall. You know, over the past couple of weeks, he had some drops and whoo. But Rashad Bateman has been better overall. Uh, last year, look at Keaton Mitchell, and he should probably be playing in this game. We'll see. Um, but then Justice Hill, he's another one that has been made a weapon. But guys like we mentioned, Isaiah Likely, uh, Charlie Cola, they've also been made into weapons too. So just seeing the Baltimore Ravens, and it's funny, I was just talking to my guy about this last night. It's crazy because all of the Ravens, and who, who would have thought this would ever happen with the Baltimore Ravens? Right now, all of the Baltimore Ravens' top pass catchers are guys that they drafted. <laughs> like, seriously, that, that, that's crazy to think about. Who would have ever thought we would ever be at that point? Zay Flowers, Rashad Bateman, Mark Andrews, Isaiah Likely, Justice Hill. Those, those are all guys that got drafted by the Baltimore Ravens. So it's homegrown talent in this thing, baby. Obviously, it's a mix of some other guys, too. But that says a whole lot about how far this Baltimore Ravens offense has come. Let's also look at, um, with the injury report, uh, T. Higgins from the Cincinnati Bengals. T. Higgins is doubtful for this game. So most likely, he is not going to be playing. He has not practiced all week. And it's crazy with practice this week because it's such a short week coming off of a Sunday game. Both the Ravens and the Bengals coming off of a Sunday game. Now you got to turn right around and play four days later, especially in this physical sport. So T. Higgins is most likely out. I did talk to some Bengals fans, and I asked him, I said, hey, do you think T. Higgins being out of this game, and I know he missed the last game too, but do you think it has anything to possibly do with his contract? Do you think it could be a business decision? And they're like, no, no, no. You know T. Higgins, he could deal with injuries and whatnot. He, this, this is just something that comes with the territory. Because they said that he, he plays, when he plays in games, he does great. 
But then you're going to have these games where he ends up missing because of injury. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool, cool. I respect it. And remember when we were hearing those questions? Any single thing that happened with Lamar Jackson? Oh, do you think it's because of the contract? But anyway, I'm glad that we are definitely past that. Uh, now, also, um, some more injury updates. Uh, and with T. Higgins, I was actually surprised by that because y'all know. Uh, and I was talking to my guy Meech about this a couple of days ago. He actually brought this up. He said, you know, like, when, when players are hurt, especially significant players from other teams, when they play the Ravens, all of a sudden it's like they just come out the woodworks and they're like, oh, I'm healthy now. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to play. So we were both expecting T. Higgins to be suiting up for this game. But the fact that he most likely won't be out there, ooh, that, that is, like, really, really big because we know T. Higgins, he wanted them guys. That boy could play. Obviously, Jamal Chase – is that guy, he's still going to make his plays, but uh, hopefully Ravens don't let him make the plays, but we know how our pass defense is, and, uh, and they all thinking about that last game, though, and I, I do seriously think that this game is going to be different. I, I think this game is going to be much different than that last game was, but we'll see tomorrow. Now, um, somebody else who is was a nice surprise because, boy, oh, boy, I was wondering, like, man, what happened to our pass rush? Because we, had, we used to have one this year. Then it all disappeared. But that might have been when Travis Jones got hurt. But Travis Jones, now, today's practice was an est it was an estimate. It was an estimation. So it wasn't a regular practice. But uh, they did say that Travis Jones, um, he practiced in full. It was limited on Monday, limited on Tuesday. But today, even though it was an estimate, but he was a full participant. So hopefully he'll be good to go because Brent Urban's still out. Michael Pierce is obviously gone. Um, so we are very thin on that defensive line. Matt Abike, he could use a bit of assistance. We know he's a big money defensive lineman. We don't need interior pressure from him. And we want him to step up. But he could certainly uh, use some assistance. Uh, Jalen Armand Davis, um, he was listed or is listed as doubtful. So most likely he won't be playing in this game. I wonder if Tredavious White is going to be playing from jump. It ain't like he would be getting like an insane amount of snaps or anything like that. But I, I wonder if he's going to be out there. From the very beginning. Uh, but Keith Mitchell, he continues to be a full participant. Um, he's listed as questionable. And I do really think that this is going to be the week that we end up seeing Keith Mitchell make his 2024 uh, season debut. Now, what would his role be, though? With them uh, releasing Charlie uh, Collier, I mean, Chris Collier, excuse me. Uh, I've got his name mixed up with Charlie Kola. But with us releasing running back and starting kick returner, Chris Collier, I wonder. Just wonder if they will be willing to put Justice Hill and Keaton Mitchell as our primary kick returners, especially since Deontay Hardy is still out. Just a thought, though. Now we've reached my favorite part of these videos where we get to feature your questions. If you would like to be part of it, you can send me an email at teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the Team Keep It Clean patrons. And if you would like to become one, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. You can send it directly on Patreon. Now, before we get into it, um, I, I got some stuff that I want to give away to some Ravens fans. It ain't going to be no contest or nothing. All you got to, if you want to, just hit me up on Twitter. Just send me a DM. That's it. Uh, it's this, this sign right here. As y'all know, this sign used to be in the background. Um, and it's also this sign. It's kind of like a little 3D looking football sign too. Nothing crazy. And I got some other stuff too. So if you would like any of that stuff, just let me know. Send me a message on Twitter and I'll get it out to you. You ain't, ain't got to pay for shipping or nothing like that. You ain't, ain't got to pay for nothing. So I, I'll take care of all of that. Just wanted to do something, do something for somebody, especially because I don't want to throw that stuff away because I'm not using it. And it's, it's nice. I like it. But anyway, let's get to these questions. So uh, first question came from my guy Xander. Now Xander. I'm going to give you a pass because I believe this is your first question. Because I don't remember seeing I think I will remember your name if I've seen it before. But you sent it to the wrong email, my friend. But I'm going to give you a pass this one time. One time only. I, I can't get no more pass. We get too many questions to be giving too many passes now. I still love you, though, Xander. Anyway, he said, um, Aang Graven, hope all is well with you and the family is good. As, as well as Team Keep It Clean, hope you all are well as your loved ones. Hey, appreciate that. We all appreciate that. Um, now, my question and thought to you and Team Keep It Clean uh, is we all as Baltimore Ravens fans aren't impressed with the trade at the trade deadline. What could have been and should have been didn't happen. Uh, do you think the Ravens will play another week or two to see how the pass rush does and maybe go out and sign one from free agency? No. Uh, that, that was it Like that was their Not necessarily their last chance But what, what are they going to get in free agency Who are they going to get in free agency If it, there was somebody you, wanted, you were going to get in free agency You would have got them already Like Yannick Ngakwe They got him in free agency And then he ended up impressing Made it to the active roster And then Yeah so that, that was that But um No that, that, that was their best shot 
So now you just got to hope that everything ends up being who everybody who's on the team right now, they just end up showing out. So I could see them giving Tavius Robinson some more playing time because Tavius Robinson in limited amount of snaps, limited playing time. He's been stepping up a lot. So you got to go with the hot hand. You got to go at what's working. Put Tavius Robinson number 95 on the field a lot more. Um, he also said, uh, or maybe waiting to see what pass rushers get waived in order for the Ravens to sign that person. Uh, has anyone looked at the current free agent list of who's out there? No, no need. I don't even think we need to. But anyway, he said, thank you for reading and thank you for all you do for the Baltimore Ravens community and fans. Uh, the things you do for YouTube and also Bleacher Report. No, Sandy, you ain't got to thank me. I thank you for even watching any of that. Next question came from my guy, DeVale. He said, peace, peace, blessings to you and the family. Uh, we should have traded our defensive. <laughs> He said we should have traded our defensive coordinator. Uh, this is the worst I've ever seen Ravens defense. I've been a fan for more than 10 years, and this defense won't win uh, and unless we do a big 360. No, no, no. You don't want to do a 360 because if you do a 360, you will literally be finishing in the same spot you started in. So that would none, be, be nothing but a big circle. You mean do a 180. And I remember this because one time I said the same exact thing. And my mom, she corrected, corrected me on it. And that was like a couple of years ago. But anyway, um... Yeah, they, they got to get they got to get it from within. It, it, it has to be in the building. They got to fix it within the building. So once they do that, then they'll be in good shape. And they've shown some signs here and there of possible improvements. It, it's just a matter of putting it all together consistently. Next question came from my guy Marcelo. He said, hey, Engraving Grizz, I hope you are having a great day. Here is what I think about the trade. I understand that things did not happen our way, and we all, uh, Ravens fans, should be disappointed. You got to look at the positive and be ready for what is next. This could have been much worse much worse than what i mean i don't think it could have been much worse i think it could have only been much better the only thing that would have been worse would be them like literally doing nothing at all and i mean with the trade deadline we gotta still remember they did trade for deontay johnson so that's part of the trade um but they traded for deontay johnson all right cool they traded for tredavious white all right cool but like were you gonna address the real issue and in my opinion, I don't think that they did. I think which, with Deontay Johnson, I, I really like that trade. I thought it made a strength even stronger, gave you even more versatility, even more depth. Um, but with Tredavious White, yeah, it gives you more depth, uh, especially experience depth. He done been there, done that. He done been one of the best cornerbacks in the league uh, for a period of time before the injuries caught up to him. Um, so hopefully he's healthy. Obviously he's fresh. He ain't played in like over a month. But um, our issue was not even with the Tredavious White trade. Our issue was the fact that Ravens didn't address the big issue, which has been the pass rush. Uh, but anyway, continuing. He said, only time will tell if the Ravens can turn this around. Do you think the Ravens can uh, get a free agent uh, that could help the Baltimore Ravens turn this around? If yes, then who? No, I, I don't think it's going to come from free agency at all. Uh, he said, uh, sending all support from Mexico. Go Ravens. Hey, shout out to you in Mexico, Marcelo. Trust the process. Next question came from my guy, Anthony. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope you and the family are great. So the trade deadline came and went. I'm sure, like most Ravens fans, we are both confused and a little disappointed. As far as the trades we did make, I give the trades value and A. We pretty much got them for nothing. They did. That's true. Uh, he said, I give the players a D plus. Reason being, they are both low risk, high reward players. I wouldn't give Deontay Johnson a D plus. I would give him like for what he could be for the Ravens. I would say a B plus. Well, obviously he can go higher than that. But I would say that the, that trade for a receiver that's been a number one receiver before, and right now he's your number three. He could possibly move up to number two and we'll see how things go. And he's from Florida. But I, I would give that a, a B plus uh, for what the. And again, Ravens got him for nothing. Like super super low risk. Tre'Davious White. He, anyway, continuing. He said, um, I do think I do think some people need to see the other side of trading meaning what a team wants and demands for a player Saints gave up three picks for Lattimore which I think was too much oh you mean the commanders gave up three picks to the Saints for Lattimore which you think is too much I don't because re reason I don't is because and I know a lot of people have say, said that, that a lot of people said when when we've expressed our disappointment with what the Ravens did or really what the Ravens didn't do at yesterday's trade deadline then the people are like oh well it takes two to tango and that is one thousand one million percent right Eric DaCosta can't be the only one that's trying to trade for somebody and, and, and he can't get that person without the other team saying okay we're willing to accept whatever you offer him but at the same time you got to not every you can't okie doke everybody you ain't gonna be able to get every single player for cheap when it comes to trade not everybody's gonna go for a fifth round pick 
You got to realize that. And if it's a better player, if it's a more significant player, you're going to have to give up some more draft picks, man. You're going to have to give up some more draft compensation. So I get it. Yes, it does take two to tango, but that first dance partner, they, they got to set the thing off right, man. They got to set it off right. So I, I just wish that the Baltimore Ravens would have done more. And now look, don't get me wrong. They still going to do the thing. They still going to win the Super Bowl this year. But I wish they would have just made it easier uh, for everybody in the building. Anyway, he said EDC is the GM for a reason and not us. Maybe he uses these 11 picks to make moves in the offseason and during the draft. That's See, I, don't, I can't get with that thinking because you're thinking about 2025. I'm thinking about right here, right now, 2024, this season. I ain't thinking about next season. Next season is next season. Ravens are in this season right now. Their pass rush is struggling right now. We ain't talking about the pass rush 2025. We ain't talking about the interior defensive line struggling 2020. We talking about right here, right now. So that was my biggest frustration, that the Ravens, they didn't address it at the trade deadline. So, yeah, I, I, so I, I disagree with that. Anyway, he said maybe he's trying to figure out how to make cap room and possibly restructure some contracts. Only EDC and the Ravens know. What are your thoughts on this as always? God bless and trust. Appreciate you, Anthony. No pass rush. The next question came from my guy TJ. He said, first off, God bless the family and the channel and all Ravens. And Raven, Ravens need to fire EDC. Like, seriously, dude, this awful draft pick's been bad. Uh, bad trades, been mediocre. Uh, how you ignore our needs for a big body, go up and get a receiver for a little fast guy? <laughs> this guy is Really, man? Except for a little fast guy. Anyway, um, and then ignore the pass rush. Worst pass rush in the league. And, and may I add, uh, and get the worst cornerback possible. Engraving, man, I'm disappointed and tired of the same old Ravens. Chiefs got better while we really stayed the same. Deontay didn't even make a play, and he's a vet receiver. D-Hop got two scores and showed out. Uh, and what 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 he what is he really trying to do? Now, hold, now hold up there. No, no, no. no. I, see, with this one, no. I, I can't get with that because... You said Deontay Johnson, ain't he, he ain't even make a play uh, on the game against the Broncos. Deontay Johnson got there on Monday, um, and the first practice was Wednesday. Wednesday and Thursday, Lamar Jackson didn't practice, and then he practiced on Friday, and they had a little walkthrough Saturday, and then there was a game. So, one, Deontay Johnson only had one practice with Lamar Jackson, one practice with his new starting quarterback on top of that he only had three practices with the baltimore ravens a brand new team he got traded in the middle of the season so we that's unreal it's unrealistic expectations in order for it to, to be like oh, oh deontay johnson man why you ain't make no plays on your on your very first game with the baltimore ravens and you just got traded this this same week i, I think that's unrealistic expectations to have for him you look at d hop d hop what he had two touchdowns the other night but guess what? That was D-Hop's second week with the Kansas City. Or was it his third? I think it's his second. I'm pretty sure it's his second week with the Chiefs. But either way, D-Hop been with the Chiefs longer than uh, Deontay Johnson been with the Baltimore Ravens. So Deontay Johnson, his, his time, it's on the way. Don't worry about it. But anyway, he said, um, what is EDC really trying to do? It's almost like he hates Lamar and doing everything in his power to stop us from winning the Super Bowl. Like, what in the team keep it clean is EDC really doing? Now, as far as um, the offense, uh, I do like that he's still – went and got another receiver. I do really like that. I actually love that because, again, you made a strength stronger, and we've been talking about that for the longest. But, um, yeah, I do wish that now on the defensive side of the ball, they actually would have done uh, a bit more there. Now, you do have a lot invested into the defense financial-wise. You got a whole lot invested into the defense financial-wise. Um, so we're hoping that um, you could just start getting that bang for your buck. Um, it's crazy. One of the cheapest players on defense, uh, he's making the most plays, that being Kyle Hamilton. Well, one of the cheapest for now. Like, he ain't going to be cheap too much longer. Man. Ooh, that boy going to get paid like crazy. Uh, but anyway, um, so yeah, again, we got to just hope for health. Again, Travis Jones' health is big. Broderick Washington, him being healthy, uh, continuing to be healthy is big. Uh, and just guys stepping up because we need it from everybody more than ever. Is it happening again? Next question came from my guy, the legit GOAT. He said, hey, Graven, so I know a lot of Ravens fans are upset because Eric DeCosta didn't trade for a pass rusher, but what if that didn't was couldn't? What if teams wanted way more uh, than what those players were worth where it just wasn't worth the risk? We have to remember DeCosta has drafted players like Matabike who gets doubled almost every play. Rashad Bateman, who's looking good this season. Kyle Hamilton, Tyler Linderbaum, Isaiah Likely, Zay Flowers, and there are so many more great players Baltimore has gotten in the draft that we just couldn't afford to keep such as Patrick Queen, Geno St uh, Stone, uh, Marquise Brown. So in my opinion, uh, Eric DeCosta has done a great job with the draft, but I honestly feel like this is another first team, almost a Raven. Now, um, people could easily flip that on you too now, because you talked about a lot of players that Eric DeCosta hit on, which is great. 
But you could also talk about even more that Eric DaCosta has missed on. And I ain't here to do that, but because that's just how the draft goes. It happens with every team. Because the more players you draft, you're going to have a lot of misses. You're going to have some hits, but you're going to have a lot of misses too. And more than likely, you're going to have more misses than hits. Uh, but that's all, it's all part of the process. But anyway, he said, DaCosta has made big splashes in the trade deadline, such as Roquan Smith tried to get Derrick Henry during trade deadline, but it won't happen to the other team if they said no. Uh, we had to wait till the offseason. I think DaCosta tried to make that splash trade again, but like the past, the other team has said no. I kind of like this move because it could free up Kyle Hamilton to focus uh, on less instead of focusing on everything. I... I, I don't see this freeing up Kyle Hamilton. I don't see Tredavious White trade freeing up Kyle Hamilton at all. But anyway, he said um, Baltimore has been really good at turning around defensive players' careers when they are not as good as they used to be. So what if this is one of them situations like Kyle Vannoy, Jadavian Clowney, where Tredavious White comes in and helps turn his past defense around? You never know. That's true. You, you do never know. And we won't know till we see him out there. Uh, he said, so maybe it can happen. Just once again, sorry for the long rant. I'm just tired of people blaming DaCosta and saying we need to get rid of him when he has had a lot of good players drafted and traded. I get a lot of Ravens fans want the Super Bowl now, but we should not be blaming him for when he has gotten us players that, like in 2019, he went out and got us Mark Ingram and Earl Thomas and Marcus Peters, who all earned Pro Bowl selection that year. We had a total of, a total of 13 Pro Bowlers. Uh, he was also included in the draft pick that got us Marlo, Lamar, uh, and Andrews. Yeah, he was included. That was, that was Ozzy, but... um. He was there, though. Eric was part of it. So uh, he said, we can't forget about Calais Campbell, who also was a great pickup and had a great season with Baltimore. Uh, I know this might not be the blockbuster trade that we're used to from DeGossa, but he has went out and gotten at least or tried to get every player Lamar has asked for. Not everyone. <laughs> not DeAndre Hopkins, not a DK Metcalf. But anyway, um, he said, uh, so sometimes it just doesn't work out. I uh, hope you have a good rest of the day. And Ravens, sorry for the long run. I can't wait to see the Ravens in there. New helmets on Thursday. See, yeah, that's you're right. Eric DeCosta has tried for a lot of different players over the years and whatnot. He has tried a lot, but that's the thing where um, with a lot of Ravens fans where they just fed up because it, we, we get tired of hearing about all the tries and why, how, how come the deal is not being closed? What's been the issue there? Is it that the team is asking for just so much or is it that you're just not willing to give it up. Long time no talk. Next question came from my guy Contact. Diddy. My guy. Oh, yeah, it has been a long time, my friend. Anyway, he said, What's good, my brother? Hope you and the fam are well. Now, here comes my question, more like a rant or statement. The front office makes my behind itch. They love all these draft picks for half of them to not even make the team. The other, ha the other half, J John, don't even play. Uh, this year, only two of the nine picks play. So, why not trade some away to get that guy a pass rusher? Then EDC will tell us we build our team uh, through the draft, but won't trade up to draft a great player. Uh, they will rather trade back and have more picks for them not to play. We haven't had a great pass rusher since Terrell Suggs. Mm. Mm. Well, well, you did say great. So, oof. I'm trying to, am I missing somebody? Uh, you might be right now. Now, Terrell Suggs, like, that's that's a pretty big, like, pedestal right there as far as a pass rusher. Like, he, Terrell Suggs is one of them guys, man. So, hmm. Y'all let me know if I'm missing somebody. I, th I think you might be right. Anyway, he said, I know you're not going to ever pick right, but dang, we drafted six pass rushes since 2019 and not one uh, will have more than six sacks in a season. A clock with no battery is right twice a day, and the problem with the defense is Zach Orr has too many substitutions. Mike ran a 4-2-5 all year, and they knew where everyone was going to be at. Um, and what they were going to do. I played college ball, and when you know who you're playing with and what tendencies, uh, you react naturally. Always running different players in the secondary. Every other play, it throws off the mojo. All of them plays on that sheet that he hold over his face, and he don't have not one play that covers the middle of the field. <laughs> I, nah, I, I ain't laughing at Zach. Oh, I'm laughing at you, the way that you put that, though, man. Because I'm thinking of uh, I'm thinking of him on the sideline with the play sheet and then what you just said. That ain't right, though, man. You ain't right for that. But anyway. He said, sorry for the long email, but this has to get fixed and fixed fast. Are we going to waste a good opportunity to talk crazy to Steelers and Chiefs fans? I want back-to-back -back Super Bowls. We Ravens fans deserve that. I agree with that part. I think Ravens fans deserve it all day, every day, especially when you got somebody like Lamar Jackson as your quarterback, and we ain't got no Super Bowl yet. This next question came from my guy, Chef Boy RT. He said, I'm disappointed. I can't lie. I'm not even a little bit excited about the one move we did make. Remember, we made two. Well, at the trade deadline, we made one, but... We made two trades. But anyway, he said, we had a chance to improve, and we didn't do that. In my opinion, Ravens saw Tavius Robinson get two sacks on Sunday and made their mind up on pass rushes. Hey, we just got to hope. Like I said earlier, man, play him some more. Hope that he just keeps doing his thing because, yeah, it got to be internal. He said, oh, well, 
Go Ravens on a Thursday. I'm so disappointed. I don't even want to joke about it. There's nothing funny about trading for a 30 year old cornerback four. I would love for him to ball out and shock me, but as of now, I have seriously low expectations. And I don't necessarily think the expectation should be high because he's depth. He's depth. And again, he's another player that the Ravens got for cheap. I think uh, we talked about in yesterday's video. He's like his deal is worth like a meal uh, in change. So it's not going to be much money that the Ravens are paying him. Um, but again, you got to hope that you can get that old Tredavious White back, that Buffalo Bills healthy Tredavious White back and hope that he just needed a change of scenery from Buffalo and from uh, the Rams. And now he's in Baltimore. So, hey, hopefully we can have resurgence.